Good evening. We are going to look at module 5, Mechanical Drives and Lifting Machines. And it also has a little bit of an introduction to hydraulics, hydrostatic loads. Okay. Now, what are the topics that are covered in this module? This module covers these topics, mechanical drives. Mechan under mechanical drives, we look at gear drives, gear belt drives, and chain drives. And then the second topic will be the li uh, lifting machines, which are the wheel and axle and the western pulley system. And then the third and the last topic will be the hydraulics, which will give us an introduction to hydrostatic laws. Then at entry, you will do a full module just on hydraulics. Okay. Now we will unpack it piece by piece. For instance, if we look at mechanical drives, we're going to look at gears separately. Okay. Now... With, with, with gear drives or with gears, we're going to look at advantages of gears, we're going to look at a single gear system, we're going to look at a compound gear system. Then we will do calculations on single gear system as well as the compound gear system. What are the advantages of using gears? Now, if you have to select now from the three that you have, from gear drives, belt drives and train drives, we will look at what are the advantages of using gears. Okay. High power can be transferred when you use gears, unlike when you have to use belts or chains. High power can be transferred and also slipping is eliminated as gears mesh directly with teeth. Okay, so they don't easily come off like a belt will come off. The direction of rotation can easily be changed by putting and I'd like here. Yeah, let me demonstrate what I mean by that. If you have two gears, gear A and gear B, gear A and gear B, gear A, if gear A rotates clockwise, gear B will rotate anti-clockwise. However, if you want gear B to rotate in the same direction as gear A, what you will do in the middle, you will put what we call an idler gear or an intermediate gear. So the idler gear will rotate, if gear A is rotating clockwise, gear C, which is the idler, will be anti-clockwise, and gear B will be clockwise. So this will enable gear B to turn in the same direction as gear A. So direction of rotation can easily be changed by putting an idler gear. Okay. And also gears mesh directly, therefore losses are minimal. Unlike with belts, one pull is here, another pull is there in between, you might have losses. Okay. And then also gears need very little maintenance. Okay, you know, even just for example, when it deals with a, the system of a vehicle, after a certain number of kilometers you have to you need to have your cam belt. Are serviced but with gears you can go for years as long as everything is fine they need very little maintenance as compared to gears and and even chains because chains you have to grease all the time and make sure that they are clean but gears need very little maintenance so these are the advantages of using gears high power can be transferred slipping is eliminated as gears mesh with teeth Direction of rotation can easily be changed by putting an eye like gear. Gears mesh directly and losses are minimal. Gears need very little maintenance. Okay, so this is the theory that comes with gear drives. Now, let's look at the single gear system. The single gear system consists of one driver and one driven. So it will be two gears. If there is a third gear, it will be the intermediate gear, which is the we also call the idler. What is the equation that you use to do calculations? NATA equals to NBTB. So this is a case when you have two gears, gear A and gear B. So N is the number of revolutions for gear A, T is the number of teeth for gear A. N, that side, is the number of revolutions for gear B. T is the number of teeth for gear B. Then VR is for velocity ratio. To calculate the velocity ratio, you will have the number of revolutions of the driver divided by the number of revolutions of the driven. Okay, so just keep that in mind, that N is the number of revolutions or rotations. 
T is the number of teeth and VR is the velocity ratio. Okay. Now, as I said, you will have two gears, but if you do have the third gear, it will be the idler, this gray one here, it will be the idler or the intermediate gear. We call it an idler or an intermediate gear. Sometimes they ask for the purposes of an intermediate gear. As we've already discussed, it can help you to change the direction of rotation of the driven gear so that it turns in the same direction as the driver gear. It also allows the center distance of the driver and the driven to be varied. Like if you want these gears to be a certain distance in between, you can put an eye like gear in between to give you the distance that you want. To the center distance, which is the center distance from this gear to that gear. Okay. So those are the two purposes of an intermediate gear. It changes the direction of rotation of the driven gear. It also allows the center distance of the driver and the driven to be varied. Now, in a case where you have the third gear, your equation will look like that. The NT of gear A will be the same as the NT of gear C, also the same as NT of gear B. Now, this equation, you will never use it as is. You will always select two combinations, whether it's A and C or A and B or C and B. Okay. And that's all you need to know about the single gear system. Now we will take an example to see how to apply what we have learned. And thereafter, we will look at the compound gear drive chain. Okay, thank you.